It's been mostly 10 years ago now. You'll probably remember this because I've spoken of this many times. But nearly 10 years ago, not more than a half a mile, well, less than a mile from here, I know exactly where I was on my trail. I'm walking along and I realize that I am, I am praying from autopilot autopilot I'm saying things that are not in keeping with the Word of God I'm praying as a mere earthling I'm praying from earth based perspective I'm asking God to please relent you know how about this prayer don't raise your hand if you've ever prayed this prayer okay don't raise your hand <laughs> Oh, God, that you'd rend the heavens and come down. Oh, I said don't raise your hand. <laughs> because that's a scripture. Shouldn't I be able to pray the scripture? Well, yes, that's before he did rend the heavens and come down. <laughs> he did that 2,000 years ago. And then he said, not only did I come down, but if you're a son or a daughter of God... Now I've raised you up. Oh, that's just, that's anathema for us to pray that prayer, at least in my thinking. It is counter to the reality of the life of God and what he's done in us to pray that prayer anymore. And so uh, anyway, I was walking on this trail less than a mile from here, and I found myself just saying stuff autopilot from what I learned. I've been in a prayer movement. I've been in prayer all my life in all kinds of prayer movements since I was, you know, a teenager. And so, you know, I feel like I can probably pray a pretty good prayer. Well, it was a good prayer from those perspectives and from those revelations, from those rhemas. And I realized that I was not praying current perspective prayers. That bothered me. That bothered me a lot. In fact, I literally put my hands on my head. I did, out in public. <laughs> and I spoke to my brain. I said, brain, it is not okay for me to give you permission to go willy-nilly on autopilot prayer mode. You must pray from the Word of God and from fresh rhema. And furthermore, brain... I charge you that when or if I slip into autopilot mode, you must stop me dead in my tracks. Maybe not dead, okay? We don't go that way. <laughs> you must stop me in my tracks and apprise me with how are you going to do it, brain? Let's see, sirens and klaxons and whistles and banners and flags and, and whatever. Stop me, arrest me. Literally. I've gotten arrested a lot of times, especially in the beginning. I got arrested for just saying phrases that were part of my rhetoric. They were part of the, in the file cabinet, so ingrained, the tentacles of yesterday's revelations had become ingrained into me. They were part and parcel with me. And that was not okay for me. And so... Honestly, as a result, I pray very, very few request prayers, petition prayers, supplication prayers. And why would that be? Because I don't think I need anything from God? No, that's not the case at all. It's because I think he said he's already given to me everything pertaining to life and godliness. So instead of me begging him for it, I want to move into his mind and begin to partner with him by declaring as an oracle. Oh, God, this thing that's in front of me, what that is is just another opportunity for another great story to be written. Yes, God, you and me are going to partner and bring forth another trophy. It's not by my might or power, but it is by me partnering with you. Oh, I could just get lost in that. It's a lot of fun because it transforms 
almost everything, not only that I pray about and how I pray, but how I talk with you and anybody else. It changes everything. I've got to see myself as seated in heavenly places, Susie. And when that happens, it will necessarily mandate that I change this. Yeah, when I don't know what God's will is, which of course, I'm not God. I'm becoming, uh, uh, Christ is being formed in me and I am getting the mind of Christ. But I'm not God and I'll never replace God and don't ever want to think like that. There are lots of things I don't know. And my two options for that is asking God, what is your mind on that? What is your mind on this issue? And we've done that many times here in our school. When, we, when there's something to pray about, let's go to the Father and ask Him what His mind is. That's, a, that's one of two, there may be more, but at least two I'll highlight today. One of two appropriate responses or uh, approaches to that matter. God, what is your mind on that matter? Because if I can hear what your mind is, if I know what your mind is, if I hear it because faith comes by hearing, if I hear it, then I can declare it as an oracle. That's number one. The other option is, Neil, what you're saying, I'm not sure if there's one that's more important than the other, but Holy Spirit, I don't know how to pray about this. How about you pray through me with groanings too deep for words? And you're going to pray mysteries to God. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14. And he prays perfect prayers, powerful prayers, prayers in keeping with the will of God. His prayers always get answered. Why wouldn't I just pray that way a whole lot? Maybe that's what Paul did when he says, I pray in tongues more than y'all. <laughs> I think he was a Texan. We have a big learning curve here. We have some unlearning and relearning of how we talk. You know, I say this, this is, this is so in our face, so ingrained into our religious practices. So we all get together and uh, now maybe we're in different places here in this school, but the garden variety Christian in the world goes to church on Sunday. And what's the very first thing the man of God or woman of God does when they step up into the pulpit? Let's ask God to come. Let's invite him to come today. Are you serious? Are you? You can't be serious. What you're telling me is he's not here today. That's a great way to start our meeting. Guys, he's not here. Let's tell him we really would like for him to come. I understand we could unpack that and kind of get some nuances of what it could mean appropriately. I understand that. But what about if we spoke from faith from the heavenly? Hey guys, I just been marinating in the mind of God. He says he's got really good things for us today. And he's excited about coming up large inside of you today. <laughs> He's excited. He spread a meal in front of us. And he said, sit down and eat this meal with me. Oh, I can get excited on that one. <laughs> what happens if our men and women of faith who are leading the sheep, I don't totally espouse to that concept, but that's where we've been. What about if those men and women of God who are leading our people, what if they were filled with faith rather than in beggar petition mode. What would that do to our people, to our populace of Christianity? 